The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Hello learners. Welcome to this learning program. I am Tasso Gerard, your economics teacher for Opposite Art. Before we start with this uh, session, let us look at the assignment we had in the last session. This is the assignment. The information on table one represents the balance sheet of an imaginary commercial bank. This is the table one. We have liabilities on the left in million of francs CFE and assets on the right. For liabilities, side deposits, time deposits and other liabilities. Assets, we have cash in two, balances at the central bank, money at court, treasurer bills, investment, loan, special deposit. Total for liabilities, 1,000. Total for assets, not given. These are the questions. Calculate the amount of money given out as loans. Remember, we go to our table, loans there, is, uh, the amount is not given, so we need to calculate it. Next question, calculate the required cash reserve ratio. And finally, list two assets that yield no profit to this commercial bank. So let's start right away with calculating the amount of money given out as loans. Before we do that, let's get back to the table. Now, to get the amount given out as loans, what we need to do is, we are supposed to, obviously we know that the Assets, the liabilities are always supposed to be the same as assets. Implying that our total asset here should also be 1,000. And if it's 1,000, we'll take the total asset minus all the, the assets that have values here. Then what is the, the answer is going to give us should be for loans. This is how we're going to do it. Let's look at the, the process, the solution. Total assets equals total liabilities which implies total asset is 1,000. So the amount of loan that is calculated as total asset minus cash in the bank still, balance of the central bank, the operational balance of the central bank, money at call, treasury bills, investment, and special deposit. These are the values. So we we'll have, um, so we'll have, 80 plus 120, those are, this, this is a total asset, 1,000, then these are the various values for the, for the asset. So, the answer is going to give us 525 million francs CV. That's the amount of loans. Now, the next question we're asked to calculate the cash reserve ratio. This is the formula, your total cash, divided by total assets times 101. And we remember our total cash here is not only limited to cash in the bank still, it includes the operational balances at the central bank because equally represent cash. So that means we'll take the cash in the bank's coffers, 80 million, plus operational balances, 120 million, that gives us the total cash, divided by the total assets, which is 1,000, times 101, to so have a percentage. So we end up having a cash reserve ratio of 20%. Now the last uh, question we expect to look at uh, the assets that do not yield any profit. We'll start with cash in the bank still. That's money that does not attract any 
profit, no interest. Second, we're going to look at the balances at the central bank and equally special deposits should equally do not yield any profit to the bank. These are the three that could be identified from the asset side. Now, we are going to lesson 20 and uh, it is this lesson 20 is based on credit creation by commercial banks. But before I get into the details, we are going to uh, give you this plan. This is a plan we will function with. We will start by the objectives. Thereafter, we'll look at previous knowledge. We'll look at the problem situation, the lesson activity, application exercises, and finally, an assignment will be given. Now, let's uh, move on straight away. We'll start with the objectives. By the end of uh, this lesson, students should be able to illustrate the process of credit creation by commercial banks. They should be able to examine the limitations of credit creation by commercial banks. Previous knowledge. The students can illustrate the balance sheet of a commercial bank. Now let's get a real life situation. A counselor in your municipality observes a drop in the level of economic transactions in your locality for over three years now in spite of the fact that financial institutions have been suffering from over liquidity. Let's look at this question. What should be done by the local authorities in order to raise the level of economic uh, uh, transactions? So by the end of this lesson, we should be able to resolve this uh, problem. We'll start with the lesson proper by defining credit creation, which is a uh, the ability of commercial banks to increase the supply of money in the form of bank deposits. Remember, we have uh, we only have three uh, modern forms of money: coins, bank notes, bank deposits. Money that is kept in uh, mostly site deposit accounts that could easily be withdrawn to use of checks. Now, when commercial banks commercial banks create more bank deposits, that means they are. Uh, increasing equally the supply of money. Now, there are three ways through which this can be done. When a customer deposits cash in a bank, when a, ba a bank buys security, and uh, when the bank grants a loan. We'll look at the, each of them uh, a bit detail. Let's start with when a customer deposits cash in the bank. Now, when a customer deposits cash in the bank, a deposit account is created in the name of the depositor. Now, the bank assets, the assets and liability will increase by the amount of the deposits. Actually, here, yeah, what has happened is that um, the, the bank has played just a passive role in creating this credit. Actually, in real terms, money has just been transferred from cash to bank deposits at this uh, initial stage. Then, we also have a situation when a bank buys a security. The bank uses checks drawn on itself to buy securities like treasury bills. Now, if it happens, a bank deposit will be created in the name of the seller immediately. He deposits the check in the bank. That's another way. Then, the bank's assets, the assets of the bank and liability will increase by the value of the security. The security actually represents an asset, but there's also a claim that uh, the bank will need to pay back the money, so it's an asset at the same time, a liability. Now, the next uh, way through which credit can be created is uh, when a bank, uh, when a bank grants a loan, when a bank grants a loan. When this happens, a current account deposit is immediately created in the name of the borrower, up to the amount of the loan. The bank assets and liability will increase by the full amount of the loan. Actually, in this case, money is created. So that uh, the balance sheet, both, as, both, both sides of the balance sheet will increase. Well, the loans now represent, um, granted, represent advances as assets. At the same time, 
if there's a claim, there's a claim on the bank, the customer will eventually take back his money. So it could represent uh, a liability. That's why both parts, both sides of the balance sheet will have to increase by the full amount of the loan. Now, banks have experienced that at any time, only a small proportion of the total funds deposited with them will be withdrawn. That is um, the experience of bankers. Now, because of that, they lend part of the total amount deposited, which we call the excess reserves, and hold the remainder, which are called required reserves, to meet the withdrawals of cash by their customers, to meet up the daily, the routine daily demand of uh, cash withdrawal. The total amount of money that the bank can create is determined by multiplying the money multiplier by the initial deposit. I'm going to explain. Uh, money multiplier simply is gotten by getting one divided by the cash ratio. When you multiply by initial deposit, we'll get the total maximum level of uh, 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 credit that can be created. We're going to see that uh, uh, detailing later. Now let's illustrate the process of credit creation using a single bank system. That's illustration of the process of credit creation in a single bank system. And uh, what do we mean by single bank system? A single bank system is when there is only one commercial bank in the whole country with many branches. That is a single bank system. Now, before we actually uh, uh, look at uh, details, the illustrations, we need to, there are certain assumptions that uh, we will have to make, assumptions of credit creation. We need to assume that we are operating under a single bank system. Equally that, banks maintain a constant cash ratio. In our example, we are going to work with 10%. Checks are used for all transactions. Any loan is redeposited in the bank, meaning that there are no withdrawals of cash from the bank. Banks are willing to lend any excess reserves. And finally, the public is willing to borrow any excess reserves. Now, let's uh, assume that a fresh deposit of 100,000 francs is received by a bank. Uh, it will keep 10%. That's an assumption. We'll assume a cash ratio of 10%. 10% of 100,000 francs is 10,000 francs as required reserve. And the rest will be given out uh, as a loan. That's 90%, which is 90,000 francs. Now, let's look at uh, how the, both sides of the balance sheet are going to be affected. The bank, the, ba the bank balance sheet will look thus. So we'll see here that um, we have the fresh deposit has been received. Is the fresh deposit has been received of 100,000 francs. That, that money belongs to a customer who will eventually get back his money. So that's why it represents uh, a liability. Now, advances. The bank received that money. Advances here represent loan. Since the cash ratio is assumed to be 10%, 10% is kept, which is uh, the cash is cash cash reserve, and they could give out loans up to ninety thousand. So at the end of the day, the liability total liability must always be equal to the total assets one hundred thousand one hundred thousand. The bank customer borrowing the ninety thousand francs. Remember, we're operating a single bank system. Draws a check against the bank deposit created in his name to settle his uh, debt because when you loan as when you're given a loan a loan account is created in your name so you can now withdraw the money with the use of a check we equally assume that only checks are used cash you don't withdraw cash from the system if you withdraw cash the process of credit creation could stop there now the recipient of the check pays it into his account in the same bank as a new deposit of 9,000 francs. The person who received uh, the check pays, credit his account with 90,000 francs. Now, what does it mean? It means that the bank now has received a new deposit of 90,000 francs. And uh, the bank normally is going to keep 10% of 9,000 francs, which is 9,000. And therefore, so 10% of 9,000 francs will again be kept, which is 9,000. While the rest is 1,000 francs, 
will be used to create further credit. Now, this process is actually going to continue like this. The process will continue until the entire initial deposit of 100,000 francs is exhausted. Now, how do we know the final, uh, uh, the total deposit that is created? To know what amount will be created in the final analysis, we can look for the money multiplier and multiply it by the cash deposit as seen below. So this is our money multiplier, which is one all of our cash ratio. Remember our cash ratio was 10%. If we take one divided by 10%, 10% here is 0.1, one divided by 0.1 gives us 10. So our money multiplier in this case is 10. Now therefore, the maximum level of bank deposits will be 1 million. How do we get the 1 million? We take the money multiplier, which is 10, multiply by the initial deposit, which is 100,000. That gives us the maximum amount, that, uh, the maximum level of uh, bank deposit. Now let's equally look at the process of credit creation in a multiple, or in a multi-bank system. What is a multi-bank system? This is when there are many commercial banks in a country competing with each other. Now, this is a more realistic situation, unlike in a single bank system. This is more realistic. The total amount of credit that can be created from an initial deposit will remain the same with that of a single bank. Now, but what is the main difference between a multi-bank system and a single bank system? Now, the main difference here is that with a multi-bank system, the process of credit creation starts with one bank and it ends up getting to other banks. And equally, many, since there are many banks operating the system, and with the multi-bank system, there is a need for a clearinghouse. A clearinghouse is a financial institution that is out to settle into a bank in debt tenants. So a clearinghouse, the need of a clearinghouse must, um, is very necessary under the multi-bank system. By the end of the day, the same amount of credit is going to be created, whether you are operating with a single bank system or a multi-bank system. Let's look at the limitations of credit creation. Probably what, what would um, limit the ability of commercial banks to create credit? We'll start with the high liquidity preference. So liquidity preference we are talking about uh, the desire for people to hold cash. When the, when the liquidity preference is high, less checks will be used and uh, banks will be compelled to hold more reserves to meet customers' cash demand. When banks are compelled to hold, to hold more reserves, what happens? It means that less excess reserves will be available to grant loans and therefore, it is through granting loans that credit can easily be created. And therefore, credit creation is going to be limited. So let's look at another limitation, which is high cash ratio. The fact that the bank must keep a proportion of its deposits in cash to meet its customers' routine daily demand limits the bank's ability to create additional credit. So when the cash ratio is high, the implication is that more money is going to be kept, which cannot be given out, means that less money will be available to give out loans. And that means less credit will be created at the end of the day. The higher the cash ratio, the lesser the excess reserves needed to make credit. That acts as a limitation to credit creation. Let's uh, look at another limitation, insufficient collateral security. When a bank, when a bank has a, a very high security standard, probably always asking for accept collateral security for loans are granted. At the end of the day, they'll grant very little loans and obviously create little uh, credits. Let's look at it. The absence of collateral security limits the bank's ability to grant loans, thereby reducing its ability to create additional deposits. So, if uh, 
Most customers approaching the banks do not have collateral security actually limits the bank's ability to grant loans, given that collateral are uh, there to secure the loans. The absence of collateral will mean that they will grant less loans, and that means less credit will be created. The clearinghouse restrictions. Remember I said the clearinghouse simply ref uh, represents a financial institution that settles into a bank indebtedness. The clearing system requires that all banks should expand or contract credit together so as to avoid persistent debit balances with the clearinghouse. So what does it entail? It means this limits banks' ability to create credit. It means that you cannot overcreate credit at the expense or why the others are not doing the same. You end up having a, 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 a negative balance or debit. You end up having problems at the level of clearing, the clearing uh, house. Holding. This is a non-productive retention of money out of the banking system. It reduces the amount left for banks to give out loans. Of course, when money is hoarded, they're depriving the banks of such money. And that means the bank will have less liquidity to give out loans. Consequently, the credit creation ability is, uh, is drastically reduced when people turn to hold their money and not depositing their accounts in the banks. Tight monetary policy. We are talking about contractual monetary policy. The government through the central bank can limit credit creation by the use of contractual monetary policy, which seeks to increase cash ratio, special deposits, and bank rates, just to name this. So a tight monetary policy means if you increase the cash ratio, obviously less cash is available, less excess reserve now get reduced. Special deposits are increased equally. It's going to reduce the ability of the banks who have less, liquid, less liquidity to give out loans or when the bank rate is, is uh, increased. When increased special deposit, bank rates and so forth, at the end of the day, the banks will not be able to grant as much loans as they would have uh, wanted. So a contractual monetary policy is going to limit the ability of banks to create credit. Inefficiency of bank managers also can be a limitation. The adoption of poor policies by inefficient managers, bank managers, which scare away creditors and depositors, limit the bank's ability to create credit. Of course, if you scare away the creditors, as well as those who deposit money, then at the end of the day, less credit is going to be created. Okay, let's, um, let's uh, recall, look at the recall of what we've done in this lesson. We started by defining credit creation as uh, the ability of commercial banks to increase the supply of money in the form of bank deposits. We equally look at the various ways through which uh, credit is created. We talk of when a customer deposits cash in the bank, when a bank buys a security with checks drawn on itself, and uh, when the bank grants a loan. We also saw the limitations of credit creation, such as high cash ratio, lack of collateral security, liquidity preference, we prefer to hold cash rather than working with checks, Contractional monetary policy to avoid tight monetary policy, as well as holding. Okay, we equally saw the clearinghouse restrictions and inefficient inefficiency of bank managers. Okay, that's where we ended. Let's look at some exercises. We we'll look at some exercises. We we'll start with exercise one. A bank that keeps a cash ratio of ten percent. Cash ratio of 10% receives a cash deposit of 240 million francs. On the basis of this additional cash, what additional maximum deposit can the bank create? You have uh, various answers A, B, C. 
Now, A, B, C, D. To get the right answer, of course, we'll determine the maximum amount that could be created. We'll use our formula. What we formula is uh, we take our money multiplier times the initial deposit. And the money multiplier was one all of our cash ratio times the initial deposit. The cash ratio there is given as 10%, meaning that one all of our 10%. Which is equal to 10. The initial deposit is 240. So we have 10 times 240 gives us 2,400. Now, but we are asked to give um, what additional maximum deposit. Initially, the deposit they had, they had a uh, deposit of 240. So to get the additional deposit, we take this 2,400 minus 240, which is going to give us. 2,160, 2,160, that's the additional deposit uh, created. So the right answer is A, 2,160 million francs. Exercise two, given that the commercial bank maintains a cash ratio of 8%, one amount of cash deposit is the bank required to receive before it can create a maximum deposit of 75 million francs. In this case, what we are looking for here is, is instead of initial deposit, we've been given the uh, cash ratio, which we we'll use it, we can use that to calculate our money multiplier. And then to get the initial deposit here, we just need to divide this our maximum deposit of 75 million by the money multiplier. So what's the money multiplier? One on uh, we have Eight percent is zero point zero point zero eight. That's eight percent. So how one divided by zero point zero eight is going to give us twelve point five. So to get our initial deposit is the total, the maximum deposit which is seventy five uh, million divided by twelve point five. That is going to give us an answer of six. Million. So our right answer in this case is uh, B. Exercise 3. Assume that banks are required to maintain a cash ratio of 2%. An additional cash deposit of 100 million francs will cause total bank credit to increase by, we're going to use the same uh, method like we did with exercise 1. We're looking at the increase in bank deposits. So our money multiplier in this case is one all over that's two percent, which is um, you calculate you are going to have fifty, and the initial deposit is one hundred. That means our maximum amount is going to be five thousand. But how much uh, cash was given? Initially, they had 100. So you take 5,000 minus 100. You are going to end up with 4,900. So our additional deposit is 4,900 million francs. That gives us a B. Exercise 4. Question 4 is based on the commercial bank whose balance sheet is as follows. Now look at the balance sheet. What is the bank's? Bank's uh, cash ratio. The cash ratio is just uh, the cash divided by total assets uh, times 101, since it's in percentage. So we have 80 divided by 1000 times 100 will give us 8%. The right answer there is uh, A. So we are now, uh, we're already getting to the end. We get down this assignment. What are the conditions? Take down the assignment. What are the conditions necessary? For commercial banks to create credit, that's for NMAX. What are the conditions necessary for commercial banks to create credit? Okay, this is the end of this lesson. Our next lesson is going to be on the central bank. <laughs> Unatege yob, unatege minga, matege nyum, 
Una tege ma jang ma tege ndom ma ne tambia niña ne injo biayen ngani bana ma tege mot ngani la kiri wa tege ndom esa kina bia dinki do ma ne tambia niña ne injo biayen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike ma ne tambia niña ne injo biayen 